extra, extra, read all about it. Sculpture captures historical headlines in bronze. Extra, extra, read all about it. Hello, my name is Brigitte Mojon, and I am the sculptor of the Newsboy. Welcome to part two of this documentary. In part one, we covered the inspiration and the process of sculpting the life-size Newsboy that was created as a limited edition bronze for the Texas Press Association. This segment will explain the mold making, casting, and installation of the Newsboys. This entire process was first documented on my website at www.creativesculpture.com. Just click on the educational link and drop down to Newsboy Journal. There's much more information on the site than I can share here. Don't forget to check out the educational resources for teachers and students. It was so much fun to create. Now let me recap some things here. Once the sculpting is complete, the sculpture must be prepared for the mold making process. To do this, the sculpture is cut into sections. Here you can see the brim of the hat is cut off, as well as the newsboy's arm. The head will be separated from the torso, and the remaining part of the sculpture will also be divided in two. To divide the newsboy, parting seams are created in clay. Each piece will be coated with rubber both front and back. Several coats are applied. And then a fiberglass resin mold will be created on top of this rubber. This is known as the mother mold because it holds the rubber in place. Sometimes the mother mold is divided up into smaller sections over the rubber. This enables the mother mold to be pulled off without destroying the wax that will be poured later. When the rubber molds are complete, they are taken to the foundry and they pour hot wax into the cavity, turning the mold to cover the inside with wax. Each successive coat creates a thin shelled model of my original newsboy. The sculpture comes back to my studio as many, many waxes. My apprentice has helped me to clean up the waxes and add any final detail that I desire. When this is done, the waxes are brought back to the foundry. Here they gate up the waxes, adding pouring cups, sprues, and vents. This will allow the molten bronze to pour freely and gases to escape. The bronze pieces are dipped in a slurry, which creates a shell around the inside and outside of the wax sculpture. The ceramic shells containing the wax are put into a very hot oven and the wax is burned away. This is why they call this process the lost wax method of bronze casting. Bronze ingots are heated up and the molten bronze is poured into the cavity where the wax used to be. Once the piece cools, the ceramic shell will need to be broken off and the sprues and gates cut off of each piece. Then the sculpture will be welded together. Texture is a trademark of my work and the newsboy had a lot of texture in his pants. I was afraid that they would not be able to match the texture, but the foundryman made a special tool, and with that, he was able to put the newsboy back together seamlessly. I monitor the process very closely and approve the final metal going over the entire piece. During our first pour, there was a problem with the position of the hand. When taking apart pieces and adding them back together, things don't always go together like you'd like them, but the foundry just cut the metal and welds it back together. Great job. The patina or color of the bronze sculpture is created by heating up the metal with a torch and spraying different chemicals onto the bronze. The foundryman rubs back areas for highlights. Once the sculpture is complete, it is covered with a protective coating and is ready for delivery. The life-size newsboy went through the same process as the little newsboys. The placement of the sculpture was originally intended for the Capitol building in Austin, Texas, but resides just a few blocks south at the Texas Press Association building. A few months later, I was approached about number two in the edition. It was going to be created for the Tabor City Tribune. They sent me a 1953 paper announcing the Pulitzer Prize that was won by the Tabor City Tribune for the articles against the Ku Klux Klan. I recreated that paper in bronze for the Tabor City Tribune newsboy which they now refer to as Billy. Billy perpetually hawks his papers in Tabor City, while Dusty as the corner just south of the Capitol building in Austin. Eight newsboys are left in the edition, and I wait with anticipation to see what newspapers in history will be reproduced in bronze, and what names will be given to these perpetual paper boys around the world. If you'd like to read the complete journal of this process, or if you'd like more information about the life-size newsboy or the small bronze newsboy sculptures, you can do so by visiting my website located at www.creativesculpture.com. Would you like a newspaper? That'll be one penny, sir.